Uh, at what point did you jump from actually taking action, and at that point it's a political movement, and it becomes more of a worldly thing than a spiritual thing? Yeah, so, um, so let, let me give you an example. So, we were talking last week about um, how churches sometimes, instead of just preaching the Bible and the Word of God, they they, they become political, right? And they have a political mission. And to your point of, it's, a, it's of injustice, is how do you keep that balance? Because you don't want to be political, because at that point you have other interests in place. So as a church, how do you do that? How do you tell your congregation you are, um, you are fulfilling them spiritually, but at the same time, you are keeping them from, from going to the worldly things, right? right. So that's my concern. Good. What was that? No. Yeah, no, a very good concern. Um, I just, I just taught a six-week series twice on the politics of Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> so I've been, I've been thinking about this a lot. And, and what I would suggest to you is that um, uh, fighting injustice is always political. Hmm. It's not always partisan. This church knows how to speak to the injustices of the world. George, every week, teaches all of us to name the injustices of the world um, in the real world every day, and then draw upon our biblical values and gospel heritage to inform how we should act, not just for ourselves, but how we should stand up for people who have no voice, how we should advocate, sometimes for policies, that are just and fair and reflect the, the kingdom of God. But that's not partisan that's not partisan politics. We're not saying, you know, he's not championing Republicans and Democrats and these candidates. In our Baptist heritage, we're very careful about um, separating church and state, but that doesn't mean that we don't understand that Jesus taught us this. To be true to the kingdom of God is a fundamental critique of all the power structures in the world whether those are religious structures, governmental structures, or whatever. That's why he got killed. Yeah. He was political, not like get out the vote, campaign political. But every time he said the rich will be brought down and the poor will be elevated, every time he welcomed those with no social status, you know, that's, that's political. Because politics fundamentally is human beings simply organizing um, to, for life together. So you can't avoid being political. You can avoid being partisan, and you can be very careful about the way you do your politics so that you do it the way Jesus did it. He spoke the truth to power, right? He stayed engaged with people, even who were his enemies. I mean, the, there are like 12 principles you could... But, so I think this is a tension we all feel, but um, it's not about not being political. It's about not being partisan, in my best understanding. So, Hard to see the difference. What's that? It's hard to see the difference. It's hard to see the difference. You, if you're political, you have to act sometimes in a partisan way. You, you ultimately have to make partisan you choices your, in a democracy. You don't give your whole life to that. It's not you don't worship that. Right. Our hope is not ultimately in the political process. Our hope is in God. And we can't lose sight of that. That, that's what it's about, really. Because we this came up when we talked about the word should. I don't like the word should. <laughs> and that's a judgment word. And it, it could be, when you say, you should do that. Why? Because you told me it's a should, something your values? Or is it law? The law says you should do that. Not, none of those really matter. Yeah. What matters is the third should. Because God, it's part of what God thinks is right. And that's the attitude. You should do this. Right. That's the only should I'm going to listen to. Yeah. 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 Otherwise, yeah. Sh yeah. yeah. Should implies a moral oughtness. Yeah. Right. So if you get political, but it's for that last objective I mentioned, you're not in pursuit of the politics, but you're in pursuit of doing right according to God's definition, yeah. definition of what you should do. If you get unavoidably political, you're just, it's okay. Right. Because there, and there are multiple times in the Bible where we have to obey God and not man. Right. That this conflict emerges where um, there's these, these dual teachings. This is my other lesson, but <laughs> there's these dual teachings. One, you should respect the authorities and subordinate yourself, right, because they have a role to create a peaceful society. On the other hand, authorities can get evil and corrupt. Mm. 
And there is a time when God's people, instead of subordinating themselves, stop. Yeah. And they stand and they resist yeah. because they have to obey God, not man. Now, what are the criteria for that? Well, we can have long conversations about when you stand and resist. But Revelation, the book of Revelation fundamentally is about a Roman government gone rogue, evil. They're, I mean, they're, they're using Christians for literal torches. They're setting them on fire, right? And what do they do there? They stand against the beast. They refuse to take the mark, right? They get their land confiscated. They lose their jobs. They resist. We will not bow down to Caesar, right? We will not kiss his ring. And if we, if we die, we die. And that's, that's resistance. So we, there's two strands in the Bible, and you have to figure out which is true. We're about out of time. Let me just touch on a couple of things, and, and uh, this has been a great discussion. So thirsting after righteousness has to be balanced with mercy. Some people so get, can get so consumed with justice, 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 right, that they have no mercy. But the kingdom of God fundamentally is not just reconciliation of the victims. It's also for the perpetrators. And this is where it gets really hard for us to practice justice tempered by mercy, right? Even our legal system believes in the concept of justice tempered by mercy. Justice can be cold and hard taskmaster, right? If you're just applying rules, but if you don't look at the context of someone's life, if you don't look at their repentance, their willingness to change, if you're not capable of giving compassion to the perpetrator, giving the right signs of willingness to participate, then you're, you're far from the kingdom of God. And again, Jesus' life was, was full of mercy. The sinners, the tax collectors, the prostitutes, all of those people, Jesus was willing to forgive and welcome as a friend on equal terms as everybody else. So his justice was tempered by his mercy. And ultimately, those are the people who are pure in heart. You can't be pure in heart, undivided heart, if, if you have a, have a perfect balance between the quest for justice and mercy. When those two come together, then you have the pure vision where you can see exactly how God works in the world. People who are merciless are people who deny justice. They can't see God. They can't see God at work. They don't recognize Him. And again, there are a lot of Christians that they can't see God at work in the world because they don't see both injustice and mercy at the same time. Well, isn't it kind of like... Um as sad as we are for the um, families of the people killed at the synagogue, what about the shooter? You know, should we pray for him too? There were no prayers for the shooters this morning. The opposite has had to be praying. Yeah. People, I feel the worst about it, exactly. The ones who are, have so much hate in their heart that they... I mean, God loves them that. too. That's hard Folks, for us to remember. We remember that people grow up, some people in this world grow up in viciously racist homes. Mm -hmm. Viciously racist communities. Some people's response to their own losses and being beaten down in life is to, is to hate others. That is a tragic thing, to be mourned. Yeah. It is to be mourned. And, and yes, I mean, but that's a hard, it's a hard place for most people to go there. It's not natural. Because we can't love. It's, like, it's, it's kind of like the death penalty. Try. Right? What's natural is kill the perpetrator. Wreak vengeance. What's unnatural is to say, no, I fundamentally believe in the, in the forgiveness of the perpetrator because that's the world I want to live in. I'm going to have to stop there because we're out of time. The, the closing idea is about peacemakers. All of this then, you become a person capable of waging peace. And that's not an avoidance of conflict. It's standing in the midst of conflict and trying to bring warring parties together in order to be fit to live in the kingdom of God. So that's a big idea too. Let me close with a word of prayer. This has been a great conversation, so thank you for your, your thoughts and ideas. Our Father in heaven, paint uh, on all of our hearts and minds this, this beatific vision of a world reconciled to you, a world where all injustices are healed, a world characterized by mercy and compassion, a world of equality, a, a world of... of um, of peace, a lasting peace, where everyone has enough. Um, Father, we believe this only, it's only possible as your grace worked through Jesus Christ, as it worked in our lives and transforms us, and then we begin to act increasingly like Jesus himself. May that be true, O Lord, by the power of your Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. I appreciate that very much.
very passionate about the subject. Did you need me to thank you? Thank you. Thanks, 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 Thanks,